Hi everybody, I'm Zell Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to do an unboxing of Tank on Tank Westfront's expansion, Defenders of the Rhine. Let's jump right in and get started. As we start out, just a reminder that this is an expansion to Tank on Tank Westfront. So in order to play what's in here, you need the Tank on Tank Westfront game. There are no counters in here, so you won't be able to do anything with this unless you have Tank on Tank Westfront as well. And also, I probably should give a little bit of context for the expansion here before we dig into it. This, of course, fits into the Tank on Tank Westfront game, which is designed as an introductory Hex Encounters war game. So if you're trying to introduce younger children to wargaming, this would work well for that. Complexity level is roughly a 2 or 3 out of 10 for this. There is some meat to the rules, but again, relatively simple, relatively straightforward. Also designed to introduce adults to wargaming, or if you are a wargamer and are looking for something that's going to play fast with yet a kind of an engaging rule set, an easy to digest rule set. So you're talking, you know, 20 to 40 minutes to, to for a scenario is what it's listed. So this would be something if you're short on time and you have a couple hours, you could learn the game, play the game, and probably get one or two games in in a very short evening very quickly. Let's jump in and take a look. This will be a relatively straightforward unboxing because we've got some scenarios, some additional rules, player aid, and then a couple of maps to look at. So a relatively uh, modest expansion to expand, uh, expand gameplay on the tank on tank west front system. So as we start to look at the uh, scenario rules and stuff that comes with it here, this is uh, 14 pages, I think, all including the back and front cover. So we, you know, it's, it's a relatively, again, this game isn't designed as something that um, is overly complex complex. There are some additions to gameplay in this one that you'll want to be aware of. There's a really cool river map um, that's in here, and so a number of the scenarios involve that river hex. So there's this additional rule here about how to handle rivers. And then I noticed in also some of the scenarios as well, there are special scenario rules for things that are going on with the bridge or going on with the river as well. So that, that kind of adds an extra element of play for the scenarios that include that map there. Then the big rule change in here that is also the same rule that's in the Tank on Tank East Front experience expansion is a gun caliber modifiers. And if you look at Tank on Tank West Front and Tank on Tank East Front, uh, we'll take a look at this with the, the, the kind of the game player aid here too. But uh, it doesn't matter what the strength of the unit that's firing, it's only the defensive value of the tank that matters whether it gets destroyed or not. So basically a Sherman has the same firepower as a Tiger tank. Um, and so in order to kind of modify for that, there's an optional gun caliber rule in here that distinguishes armored units by three different levels, which is either normal caliber, light caliber, or large caliber, heavy caliber weapons. And they get advantages in combat if you're a heavy caliber weapon. You get disadvantages if you are a lighter unit. So now a Sherman firing or a Tiger firing, there's going to be a difference there in the game, which I think that's a really nice addition to gameplay. And I will be probably using that one right from the start. So we can kind of take a look at how that rule works in here. Then we slide over here into, yeah, and here is our list on the left-hand side here, which ones are large caliber and which ones are small caliber. So Puma, for example, small caliber, King Tiger, King Tiger, large caliber. So yeah, so then we can kind of talk about that. Now we go in here to the scenarios and this of course is kind of one of the bigger parts of this gameplay edition are the scenarios that get added. There are a dozen altogether. Good variety, good mix. Some of them including snow, kind of lots of historical elements here. A number of them including this bridge map that we'll take a look at too, which I think looks really kind of fun. And then the only thing to mention here about these, in addition to that, is that uh, scenario number 12 here is an east meets west. So you, in order to play this scenario number 12, you need tank on tank west front and tank on tank east front, but that's the only scenario that is like that. I should also note here too that these SSR special scenario rules, um, most of the scenarios have some sort of special scenario rule that kind of dictates some unique elements of play there. So a good way to kind of, you know, make a modest increase in complexity and kind of give some nuances to the scenarios uh, and make each one a little bit different. So that looks kind of fun. And then we slide into some promotional material for the other games. And we are through the additional scenarios, scenarios and the rules that are involved with them. Let's take a look at the player aid that comes with this expansion pack. It's just one sided. This is identical to the player aid you get in the tank on tank East Front expansion. This is basically the, the big rule modification that comes with the expansions are these gun caliber rules and this is a player aid you can keep handy to look at those to see which ones are large caliber and which ones are small calibers here so it also explains how the rule works there too which is a pretty neat addition to the system now let's take a look at our two maps there's actually two slash 
four maps. And as with the Tank on Tank East Front expansion, let's unfold these. These are uh, much larger maps and hexes uh, in particular. So the I think the original games have hexes that are about an inch and a quarter wide. These are an are inch and three eighths, and these are almost uh, inch and three quarters wide. So much bigger hexes. The maps themselves are larger. This is a, a 20 inch by 27 inch uh, footprint for the map here. And uh, you know, printed on a cardstock, multiple folds, and things like that. To uh, this is, of course, our bridge hex, a bridge map here. We can see the bridges that are here, the river going through. This looks like a lot of fun. I mean, I think it's going to add a really interesting element to gameplay. We've got some hills up here to the right. We've got woods. We've got a little town on the other side of the ridge. And I think in some of the symbol uh, scenarios, this symbolizes the Rhine. So you know, of course, tanks can't move in the water and things like that. But you're trying to kind of fight for possession of the bridge. This looks like it's going to add a lot of gameplay there. And if we flip this over, the other side of map F, F as has been done with the previous editions and all kind of elements of this game we get the same map but we get the snow side of the map so for scenarios that involve snow and I imagine you could you, know, you could play each scenario with snow if you wanted to just add some snow rules in uh, you get now this same basic map we get the river the bridge and that except it's in a snowy wintry landscape and i do i think you know when you add in all of the maps that are in the expansions i mean there's you know the two core games and the two expansions you know when you add in all of the maps for these it's a pretty expansive system and given that system for designing your own scenarios and the idea behind this series that it's designed to very introductory wargamers and also for younger wargamers i could see kids having just a blast taking a bunch of these maps and designing their own scenarios with them. Now, they, they're not geomorphic. They don't plug together. They're all standalone maps. Uh, but, you know, for a, a game at this scale, you really probably wouldn't want to make them much, much larger in any case. So, yeah, so this is map F for this one here. Let's take a look at our second map in this expansion. This is map G. Very similar type to the map F, except uh, no bridge and no river. So we get some crossroads here. We get a nice kind of hilly ridge here going on. Uh, it looks like this would be then higher terrain here. I'm not quite sure how the elevation works for this one as you go up, but it looks like that's what it is. We've got a little town over here, town on the bottom, crossroads here. And then if we flip this one over, we get the same map, map G, with its snowy brother uh, element for it here too. And I really like the detail. If you look in real close on these maps, and I show some close-ups of photos of these as we, we kind of go through these, uh, there is a lot of detail to the, the buildings and the maps and the trees and things like that. So really kind of a nice job of kind of pulling you in. I think with the counter set too, it creates kind of really nice uh, visual appeal, which is uh, very important for, I think, introductory wargamers. It's got to look good if you're trying to make someone be interested in a particular genre of games. That visual appeal is uh, you know, directly correlated. We know it is in a lot of different areas. Uh, visual appeal is correlated with engagement. So I think they've done a really good job in keeping this design simple and yet making it clean and visually appealing. And so there we go. A very straightforward unboxing of the Tank on Tank Defenders of the Rhine expansion for Tank on Tank Westfront. Be curious to hear if you had a chance to give this system a try, if you like it. And I will be coming, uh, bringing some gameplay from this system, both Tank on Tank West Front and East Front, with some of the rules variants here, perhaps one of the scenarios here, in an upcoming kind of videos on the channel. So I look forward to doing that at some point in the near future. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, I'd be happy to hear them. And have a great day.